What are the odds that a tiny country surrounded by hostile and hate-filled enemies could win every battle and flourish year after year? Find out the miraculous answer today on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice. I'm Jonathan Burnus. Sadly, anti-Semitism is on the rise all around the world. Now, in recent weeks, we've shown the evidence of this and learned that it's not likely to subside anytime soon. Still, there are those who continue to diligently work to bring down ancient stereotypes and misunderstandings, especially among Christians. My guest today is a longtime filmmaker whose work has graced PBS and BBC television, and he's a staunch supporter of the people of Israel. And he's one of those that are crusading against anti-Semitism. He's back again this week to help us better understand how and why anti-Semitism crept into the early church and to tell us about a new project he's working on that will be a powerful tool for tearing down barriers between Jews and Christians. Let's welcome back Bill McKay to Jewish Voice. Bill, welcome back. I really, I, I, I really want to express appreciation for you taking the time to fly in today to do these shows because, as we talked about last week, Israel is at a critical juncture, the greatest threat they've faced since 1973, and you called this an existential threat last week. Can you start there again? Often, uh, I have been asked questions, why? Why do the nations of the earth have such a voracious hatred toward the Jew. And when you think about it, Jonathan, I mean, the greatest scholars in history are Jews. The scientists that have brought about the healing of medicine for the nations have been the Jews. Some of the most beautiful music that has elevated the soul, the art, the culture, have come from the Jew. Wherever they've gone, from Persia to Russia, parts of Europe and America. So why would they be hunted down? Why would they be persecuted? And this question has has been put to me many, many times. And as I've studied, and I I am not an expert on anti-Semitism, but I, I have thought about it, I have studied, I have asked a lot of the hard questions, and I'll tell you, Jonathan, I think the key, notwithstanding the literal thousands of books that the Jews have written on the subject of anti-Semitism since World War II, and all the psychobabble that can be attached to that subject, I think the root cause is supernatural. And I've said to many Jewish audiences, in your quest for equality with the peoples of the earth, in your pursuit of excellence in education and knowledge, you chose systematically to disengage yourself from the book, from God, and from Satan. And when you lost that knowledge, you looked to the intelligentsia of the Jewish mind to answer these questions. And you've come up wanting every time. So the cause of this problem that started with Haman and went all the way through Hitler has been Lucifer as the accuser of the brethren, hunting the Jew down and mocking him before the nations to humiliate him and discredit him. But the time is coming when God's gonna deal with him. What is the greatest lie in the history of the world. We're going to answer that when we come back. There's much more with Bill McKay when we return. Stay with us. What are the odds that a small country surrounded by powerful and hate-filled nations could survive long, fierce battles? And what are the odds that this same small nation, time after time, has been victorious for more than 60 years? Now you can experience the gripping and miraculous history of the nation of Israel in Bill McKay's landmark film, Against All Odds. 
drawing on historical and eyewitness accounts, this powerful DVD presents the epic story of faith and divine intervention that has kept this tiny nation secure throughout decades of bitter attacks. As our way of saying thank you for your gift of $40 or more, we want to send you your own DVD copy of Against All Odds, along with this United States and Israel flag pin that will show your support for Israel. Your generosity will ensure that urgently needed medical care will help Jewish people suffering from disease and poverty. More importantly, they will hear the truth of their Messiah. And for your special gift of $100 or more, we'll send you this six DVD set of Against All Odds, the miniseries. In rich and dramatic detail, you'll see how God's supernatural protection has followed the children of Israel over the years. Call or click right now with your gift of $40 or more to receive your own copy of Against All Odds, along with the U.S.-Israeli flag pin, or $100 or more for the power-filled six DVD miniseries. Your gift will ensure that urgently needed medical care and the truth of Yeshua will bring hurting Jewish people around the world help, health, and hope. Welcome back to Jewish Voice. I'm Jonathan Burnus, and with me today is filmmaker and author of this amazing DVD series, Against All Odds, Bill McKay. And Bill, that was so eloquent uh, before the break. Uh, there's, there's so many books that I've read on anti-Semitism that define anti-Semitism as totally illogical. You're saying it's totally logical because the root of anti-Semitism is spiritual and it's Satan. It's the accuser of the brethren. And if you study anti-Semitism, what you find, even though the acts and the agents are separated by geography, sometimes by a thousand years, they will have the same methodologies the same strategies, the same techniques. So that's what provoked me to, to think about the accuser of the brethren as the cause agent, if you will, driving the Hamans, the Hitlers, the pogroms, the Holocaust, etc. And in my journey, uh, Jonathan, I, uh, I want to say stumbled, but I, I think the Holy Spirit was perhaps guiding my, my thoughts and, and, and my, my direction. When I came into the context of what I think is the greatest lie in history, and there have been many great lies. I mean, Goebbels in, in the Hitler regime was the master of, 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 of lying. And, and there have been other liars. And that, it's been said if, you, if the lie is big enough and you tell it enough, it, it becomes, becomes truth. The, it becomes truth. Yeah. So the biggest lie in the history of the world, in the history of mankind. That the Jews are the Christ killers. And the origins of this lie was in the, in the third century in the Nicene Council, when the Catholic Church was being formed and power was being consolidated. They understood intrinsically this concept of being the chosen people could not stand. The Jews had carried that identity, that message, that relationship with God throughout its entire history up until the third century. And the Catholic Church decided that if they were going to now have a direct relationship with God, and they were going to be his representatives on this planet, that they had to inherit that title, which meant they had to kill off the elder brother, to use a political term, uh, when a coup took place in, in an ancient kingdom. And so the adjudication of the question at the Nicene Council, who killed Christ, became the pivotal moment when they determined that the Jews as Christ killers should forever be eradicated from the face of the earth. And that's when the license was given to every king in Europe, every tyrant and village idiot that wanted to inflict pain, sorrow, humiliation on the Jews, they could now do so in the name of Christ. You, this, this is so shocking because we're talking about the greatest f uh, form of anti-Semitism and the greatest attack against the Jewish people by being at the hands of the very people who were commanded to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy and to love the Jewish people. 
and to to repay back the people that brought them the gospel with this this kind of hatred. Well, and this is where the lie becomes vicious and malicious because the symbol of Christianity has been the cross. So for every Jew that I have met who came from Europe to the United States seeking refuge and protection, they carried the brand of the cross on their back. You and I look at that as a symbol of hope, of redemption, of power, life over death. But when the Jew sees that cross, they see an accusation. They see a threat. And so when we glibly think of the cross or we mention the cross to a Jew, it repels them. And so I came into an, an interesting situation, Jonathan, about two years ago. I was meeting with one of the heads of a major U.S. film studio. And I was asked by them to develop a motion picture on the life of Jesus to pick up where Mel Gibson left off and would basically take the story all the way through the resurrection of Jesus Christ because that story has never been adequately told. And when I got involved in, in doing the research and the development for the script, I went right back to the cause of this great lie, the Jews being the Christ killers. And I believe that God has led us now in the development of this motion picture to eradicate. No, I, I'm saying we're going to crawl down the throat of the accuser of the brethren and we are going to take that lie out of his mouth and by the power of the Holy Spirit, yes. we're going to destroy that lie that has caused enmity between Jew and Christian, between Gentile and Greek. Phil, you believe that it's absolutely essential that, this, that the back of this lie is broken, so to speak, that, Bef it's, that before, it has to be eradicated. Before the scales can move, the lie has to be broken. So this motion picture is not just to entertain the masses or even to, uh, you know, tell an interesting aspect of Christ's life and ministry, uh, etc. This, at its heart and soul, is to break the power of the lie. And you believe that this is the lie that's been holding the Jewish people back from finding their Messiah. I, I agree as a Jewish believer. And when they see him whom they have pierced. If, they what, will we. What does this mean for the Christian that's watching this program right now? This means we have an unprecedented responsibility, and all I would ask is for your prayers. Uh, in the last two or three years that we've been developing this motion picture, uh, and I know we trade in language. I have been withstood by the enemy, uh, and we have said that sometimes casually to each other, uh, and I have thought that about my life at different times. I have been withstood, and I don't have enough time in this program or in two days of conversation to tell you the attacks that we have sustained in bringing this picture to the nations. But by God's grace and with the prayers of the believers, I believe we're going to see this thing realized. And I believe as we eradicate this great lie, this is the greatest comfort that we can bring to the Jewish people. I hope this is speaking to your heart. It's sure speaking to mine. Bill, I... I I said at the beginning of the program that anti-Semitism is on the rise at an alarming rate. And one way that's being expressed today is anti-Zionism, which is anti-Semitism. Talk about the critical juncture that Israel is at right now, uh, Iran specifically, as an example. Well, as we, as we look at the nations gathering again one more time, to finish off the Jewish people. The tip of the spear right now is Iran, as they are preparing a nuclear warhead that can be launched from Tehran to Tel Aviv and literally destroy the Jewish nation. We as Americans, we as, as Christians, need to understand the simple truth that the Iranians are not rational in the sense that the Soviets were rational and that we could have a mutually assured destruction in terms of a nuclear standoff. With the Iranian mind, they believe that the destruction of the Jewish people, even if it requires an Israeli response to wipe Tehran off the face of the earth, they believe that nuclear exchange will invoke 
the coming of what they think is the 12th Imam or the Messiah. And what's interesting as I've been studying this, Jonathan, is they believe that Jesus Christ will return first before the coming of the Imam and that he will convert to the Muslim religion and subordinate himself to Muhammad. And then the 12th Imam will rule and reign on the earth. So when they look at a nuclear exchange with Israel, they see it as a catalyst to bring about the coming of the 12th Imam. A lie, the greatest lie in the history of mankind, the Jews killed Jesus. It is a lie. Tell us, give us the truth. Well, the Who truth is Jesus? that if you go back and study the first century conditions under which uh, the crucifixion took place, it was not the common folk of Israel. In fact, when Jesus spoke, he would have crowds of 5,000 up to 20,000 people. Now, not, not to diminish it, he was a rock star. I mean, this, this man commanded the attention of the Israeli people. Five days before his crucifixion, when he walked into Jerusalem, the historians estimate that the crowd exceeded 200,000 Israelis. Now, what happened in five days didn't change their public attitude toward Jesus. It was the elites of the power structure, Pilate, who was the governor from Rome, Caiaphas, who was the bastard priest. He was not in the lineage of Aaron. He was hated by the Jews. He and Herod and Pilate conspired to kill Christ. And it was the elites that made the decision, not the common Jew. The common Jew's heart was with Christ. So we go back in, in, in the development of this motion picture and we, in a forensic way, tell a great political thriller that is essentially going to be told as the greatest story never told. Bill. God bless you. God bless you. Thank uh, you so much for being uh, here. Keep up the great work. Uh, We're we'll be praying for you. Pray. More on the miracle of Israel when we return. What are the odds that a small country surrounded by powerful and hate-filled nations could survive long, fierce battles? And what are the odds that this same small nation, time after time, has been victorious for more than 60 years? Now you can experience the gripping and miraculous history of the nation of Israel in Bill McKay's landmark film, Against All Odds. Drawing on historical and eyewitness accounts, this powerful DVD presents the epic story of faith and divine intervention that has kept this tiny nation secure throughout decades of bitter attacks. As our way of saying thank you for your gift of $40 or more, we want to send you your own DVD copy of Against All Odds, along with this United States and Israel flag pin that will show your support for Israel. Your generosity will ensure that urgently needed medical care will help Jewish people suffering from disease and poverty. More importantly, they will hear the truth of their Messiah. And for your special gift of $100 or more, we'll send you this six DVD set of Against All Odds, the miniseries. In rich and dramatic detail, you'll see how God's supernatural protection has followed the children of Israel over the years. Call or click right now with your gift of $40 or more to receive your own copy of Against All Odds, along with the U.S.-Israeli flag pin, or $100 or more for the power-filled six DVD miniseries. Your gift will ensure that urgently needed medical care and the truth of Yeshua will bring hurting Jewish people around the world help, health, and hope. Those that teach about the last days almost completely agree. There's, there's a consensus that the restoration of the land of Israel, the, the Jewish people to the land of Israel, began the end time, that final end time clock ticking. And this is a modern miracle that we have experienced in our lifetime. For many of you that are watching, you remember in 1948 when Israel was restored as a nation. Uh, I remember 1967 when Jerusalem uh, was restored. Uh, after the Six-Day War, miracle after miracle being fulfilled before our very eyes. 
Uh, this is, again, a modern-day miracle and three reasons I began to talk about last week, three reasons why the restoration of Israel is a miracle. First of all, this was a fulfillment of Bible prophecy and is a continued fulfillment of prophecies found through our, th throughout the Old Testament uh, that the land of Israel would one day be restored to the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We were scattered for disobedience, uh, 2,000 years, almost 2,000 years of wandering from nation to nation, being kicked out of those nations, continuing to wander, and then 1948, the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And last week, I introduced Ezekiel chapter 37, a, a vision that Ezekiel has of a valley filled with dry bones. And the Lord causes him to ask this question, can these bones live? And Jeremiah, is in, or, or Ezekiel rather, is instructed to prophesy over these bones and speak life into these bones. And they live. Sinew comes back on the bones and then it's interpreted for us that this is the restoration of the land of Israel and the breath of life coming into the children of Israel as they're restored back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's happening. It will continue to happen. And ultimately, this will bring about the return of Messiah, Jesus, to this earth. Uh, then I touched on Jeremiah chapter 16, an amazing prophecy that I want to pick up with in verse 14. Let's look there together. It says, therefore, behold, the days are coming. And this is, in fact, an allusion to the end times when it will no longer be said as the Lord lives who brought up the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives who brought up the sons of Israel from the land of the north and all the countries where he had banished them, for I will restore them to their own land which I gave their fathers. And that, of course, is what is today modern Israel. What's so significant about this prophecy written hundreds of years before Jesus is ever born is that the watershed event in the history of Israel is the exodus out of Egypt. Uh, it's, the historians tell us about three million Jewish people, men and women and children, came out of, of Egypt, and we celebrate this every year, the watershed event in Jewish history when we were redeemed out of Egypt, and after wandering, we were brought into the promised land. But Jeremiah says this will be overshadowed by an event that's yet to come when God will regather the children of Israel out of the North country. It's not talking about North America, North Carolina, North Dakota. It's talking about North of Israel. It's talking about the former Soviet Union. It's no coincidence that the greatest aliyah or return of the Jewish people in modern history is from the former Soviet Union. A million Russian speaking Jews now live in Israel having been restored in the last 20 years. And then one other one, Isaiah chapter 11, which I love so much. Isaiah 11, 11, in fact, is another prophecy that clearly predicts the, the, the supernatural regathering of the children of Israel. Uh, look at verse 11 with me. It says, then it will happen on that day that the Lord will again recover the second time. First was the Babylonian captivity, but now the second time with his hand, the remnant of his people who will re who remain, and then he mentions Assyria, Egypt, Pathos, Cush, the various places of the world, the islands of the sea, and he will assemble the banished ones of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah, Judah from the four corners of the earth. A miracle in our times, the regathering of the children of Israel back to their ancient homeland. The second reason that this is a miracle, that the restoration of Israel is a miracle, is that the Jewish people, uh, in the fledgling declared state of Israel in 1948 were attacked by their Arab neighbors and survived through at least three wars that they should have lost. 1948, when Israel declared uh, state, statehood, they were attacked by their Arab neighbors, outnumbered 60 to 1. They had almost no weapons. They had almost no training. And miraculously, they prevailed and survived. 1967, the Six-Day War. Uh, there's the hand of God, knock, 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 six days. They defeated the combined Arab armies surrounding them, Egypt, Syria, uh, Jordan. Uh, in six hours, they destroyed the entire Egyptian Air Force, excuse me, rather three hours, and they, they as a consequence, uh, took back the city of Jerusalem that was trodden down by the Gentiles for almost 2,000 years, directly fulfilling the words of Yeshua. And then finally, the last miracle is that Yeshua himself said that the Jewish people must be back in the land 
for his return to, to, to happen. Matthew 23, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, you won't see me, see me again until you say, blessed is you comes in the name of the Lord. The modern miracle that Jerusalem is back under the control of the Jewish people, directly fulfilling the words of Yeshua, Jesus himself, that you will eventually cry out when you're back in Jerusalem, blessed is you comes in the name of the Lord. It's happening in our day. End time prophecy is being fulfilled. How do we know? We just look to the restoration of the land of Israel. Come to where heaven and earth meet. Join Jonathan Burness in the Holy Land, November 30th through December 11th for the Jewish Voice 2012 Israel Tour. Experience a land of rich history, walk where Yeshua walked, and explore the very backdrop of the Holy Bible. You'll visit Tel Aviv, Jaffa, Caesarea, Nazareth, the Sea of Galilee, the Mount of Beatitudes, and more. Call or click now for more information. I hope that you'll join me this year in Jerusalem. See you there. You know, all of us at Jewish Voice are passionate about proclaiming Yeshua, Jesus as the Messiah to the Jew first and also to the nations. We know that the time is running short for so many impoverished Jewish people. Their need is so great and it pushes us to be even more determined to carry out our mandate and mission, which is to go anywhere in the world where God's chosen people need help. So far this year already, we've reached more than 16,000 people. We've provided free medical care, dental care, eye care, and listen to this, more than 5,100 have already made professions in Yeshua as their Messiah. It's friends like you that make it possible. And I wanna personally thank you for your continued prayer and financial support. Your generosity fuels this critically needed work. So I'd like to thank you for your financial support in a very special way. First, I wanna send you uh, this powerful DVD by Bill McKay, Against All Odds. As we learn today, God's protection continues to hover over Israel, and the stories that you'll find in this important DVD is going to encourage you, I promise you that. I also want you to have this beautiful pin with the flag of the United States and Israel. This is a tangible symbol of your support for Israel and is a constant reminder of the long-lived protection of our Father God. Your gift is gonna make it possible for us to reach out to Jewish people in absolute poverty, in the greatest need, and bring them life-changing medical care, dental care, eye care, and most importantly, the gospel, the good news of their Messiah. I just want you to know this. We love you, we thank God for you, and so appreciate your faithfulness. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I want to remind you to Join us again next week, and until we go, I want to encourage you, the Bible says, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. For all of us here at Jewish Voice, this is Jonathan Bernis saying shalom, and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you. 